Hello everyone, I'm back with another programming video and today what I learned about is the separation of concerns, structure versus style versus behavior. Now you're probably wondering what the heck is structure, style, and behavior. I'll get into that in a second. Let me just show you this. So basically, I'm building a website with, with JavaScript. This is what I got so far. It's pretty plain, doesn't really have anything. Um, just uh, two links for Google, a hello, and then second and third, and then a button. But the Google, it literally goes to Google. <laughs> so we got that. It's pretty plain and pretty basic. But what I'm learning about, which is the structure. The structure is just is HTML. HTML. HTML is only used for the content, meaning it's not going to be used for anything else like Styling, well, what type of colors, that's what I mean. Um, CSS is used for. It's used styling for like different colors. Um, so different colors, give me red, the clicking button. It can turn red at certain points. And the check mark is blue, you see. So, and then JavaScript is for the behavior of the website. So whether that button turns on or whether this link, I mean, or see this, this is made of JavaScript, right? It goes to the different links like this. It does alerts like this. Uh, that's my other website, by the way. Um, you can go check that out. It has a pretty cool games. Um, and so since we're doing... Basically, it's like a versus, so a competition kind of thing. Meaning, it's only used for one thing. Like, HTML only used for one thing. CSS is only used for one thing. And JavaScript is only used for one thing. But the class list of DOM, which is... DOM is what I'm working on. It's a document, object... Do, hold on, let me see here. Well, I came back and document... Op Object model is what DOM stands for. Now, DOM is what this whole thing is. Call you see it has DOM right there. So, an example, say you're just using the class list, which would be um, the list of like these. But if you do your, let me show you right here. Do your document. Document dot query collector button. So we got dot class list. It'll give you the value. Um, it should give you the button value button. I just don't have it on here right now but it would say button value button now another there's other ways that you can use your class list just like dot add which dot add this is what it would look like um it adds classes to the class list dot remove removes um, items from the class list and dot toggle dot toggle is a very nice one dot toggle. it's actually really helpful because you can do it's meant for different uses so say you want to make the button invisible right and you do dot remove or dot add well you can just use dot toggle and it just means say if the class was invisible already then it will remove it, and if the class was not applied, then it will add it. And it will also say true or false, if it is added or if it is not added. It can go on if you just endlessly um, button, toggle, dot toggle. Undefined. Let's see what's happening. So how you do the button dot toggle is this. You have your document dot query selector 
with the buttons in the parentheses and quotation marks dot classless dot toggle, which then it'll say invisible. So if it's false, and then true, false, true, false, going on, which is using a boolean. I'm pretty sure you have is that how you say it. Um, that's if something is true or false. So that's what I learned today. And I hope you enjoyed and learned something out of this just like I did. Have a great day.